I want to do a couple more examples on exponential decay. And that's what the next two podcasts will be on. Remember, exponential decay, or what we call half-life, remember this guy here, has to be the half. Yeah, but check out how I rewrote this, because you might see this on some diploma exam, right? They may give you a formula, and here's the thing that you got to look at this formula. You'll notice that it has the half there. So remember at the beginning of all of these podcasts, we talked about all of that stuff that you learned in Math 10C. You got to remember that that negative right here actually means to flip this guy. So this, this formula and this formula are exactly the same. The only difference is, is you got an ugly negative here. But you have to remember that negative means, yep, flip it. Okay? So All right. So with that in mind, let's look at this wonderful little problem here. Okay, so half-life, you got to remember, is the length of time it takes for something to decay to half its original amount. So, okay, let's go to town. This question here says, all right, half-life of sodium-24, radioactive sodium, is 14.9 hours. Okay, a hospital buys 40 milligram sample of sodium-24, wants to know how many milligrams to the nearest tenth of sodium will remain after two days. Well, that's an interesting question. Let's take a look at the formula. Remember, AT, so there's our total, just like always. Always start with your initial amount. That's still the initial amount. You're talking about half-life. And remember now that unlike money, this is the time over something called the period of time for this to decay, right? So it says the period of time for this to, to decay is 14.9 hours. That's the half-life period. Okay, so all you got to do is throw some numbers in now. It's pretty simple. 40 milligrams of this stuff. You got a half-life here. You got a time here, 48 hours. Notice that 48 hours and hours has to match. So you got a total of 48 hours over a period of 14.9 for it to start to decay. Okay, all you got to do is throw that in your calculator and now crank out a number. It's pretty easy. 40, right? Half-life, so I'm going to put an alpha. I like that fraction button. Did I mention that before? Yeah, I think so. Okay, outside, there we go. Boom, okay? And then this is going to be raised to the power of, there's that fraction button again. So you can actually see that this is 48 hours, right? Divided by the period for each half-life, 14.9 hours, okay? Now, that's simple. Now, all you got to do is crank it out. Boom, you're down from 40 grams down to 4.29 or 288 milligrams. But if you read the question, it says how many milligrams to the nearest tenth? So 4.288, blah, 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 works out to be 4.2, oh, sorry, 4.3 milligrams to the nearest tenth. Okay, simple. Now, that's interesting. But what happens if I ask you this question? After how long will only 2.5 milligrams remain? Now this becomes an issue. The issue is, guess what? we got to be flexible with that calculator and our abilities. So remember the formula here. The formula was, okay, 40, one half the time over the period of 14.9. That was your final amount. But you're told the final amount. Final amount was 2.5. So let's check it in there. 2.5 milligrams, your initial amount was 40. This is one half to the power of T over 14.9. Okay, so away we go. Let's solve this thing. Now you can solve this by leaving it exactly the way it is. And honestly, in this particular one, I would. This is already a very small number. 2.5 is a small number. So just put this in as Y1 and this whole thing as y2 into your calculator and find the intersect. That simple. Okay, so let's do that. 2.5 goes in for y1, and then, of course, 40 times, there's the alpha again, there's the one half. Now, I know you want to put 0.5, but I, 
I hate decimals. I like fractions so much nicer. Raised to the power of, now, again, there's your alpha. And the reason why you're putting in a fraction here is, remember, your x goes on top over the period, which happens to be 14.9, right? Now, if I use the zoom standard, which is what I always used to, used to use, that doesn't even show up. Okay, well, which one is the blue line again? Let me look again. Let me see. The blue line was that 2.5. So obviously that red line, oh my goodness, is, is got to be, and since this is a half-life, think about it. It's going to start way the heck up here and start going out that way. This blue line is going to be here. So this intersection could be, I don't know, could be out here in the 20s, in the 50s, right? could be out into the hundreds. We don't know. So that's where we have to start playing around with our window settings. But knowing a little bit about what this looks like really, really helps. So let's go into our window settings again. So look at the graph, go into your window settings. Let's increase that X value. Let's start with 20. Let's see what happens. Graph it. Still don't see anything. Okay. Let's keep on going. Window setting. Let's go up to, oh, I don't know. Let's go up to 50. Let's see what happens. 50 graph it oh i'm finally starting to see that graph coming down aha so let's increase that window setting again let's go all the way up to let's try 70 and see what happens now i can see my intersect it's that exponential function remember there it is here because it's decreasing because it's decaying shows you this kind of j curve Okay, so that's important to be able to play with those numbers. Plus, if you go second calc and you find the intersect now and just enter, 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 there we go. We find out that it actually takes 59.6 hours to actually do decay to that point. That's a long time. Okay, so let's put our number in there 59.6 hours to do this sweet what a great question 